so in this session we are going to see some of the recent developments or issues in nature plus current affairs okay see the question number 1 here what do you mean by the word coral bleaching what are the reason because you might read in the paper that pacific islands lost nearly 50% of coral reef again if you travel in india gulf of kutch they lost many of their valuable coral islands even lakshadweep same issue there so what may be the reason and thirdly what are the measures you can take to minimize the damage of coral reef three component what is coral bleaching reasons maintenance okay when i put the word coral bleaching losing the colored pigments of the coral the corals lose their colored pigments because as you know the corals are comprising a symbiotic algae zu sandella when i speak technically or you can put the word symbiotic algae the bleaching reflecting the degradation of the colored pigment of the algae because algae are photosynthetic they containing colored pigments so losing of the colored pigment of the algae reflecting the term coral bleaching so if you take in india 25 percentage of all marine species are the home for this coral or coral beds or coral reef we will see how this going on one is the major reasons are one is the increasing surface temperature of the sea coast many of the coral bleaching happened in that part of the world where the surface temperature increased to 1 degree celsius the sea surface temperature increases have strongly associated with el nino weather patterns as well as the global warming created by human interference have you see the point the rising of temperature to 1 degree is connecting one side with the el nino programs or weather patterns global warming and indirectly both are under the verge of or under the regulations of human interference that's one of the reason secondly the sea level rise because of the global warming around the world most of the ice sheet or glad glaciers are melting so the sea level is gradually rising and sedimentation resulting from sedimentation runoff can lead to smoothening of the coral islands and the reason so rising of sea level due to melting of ice and accumulation of sedimented products and third is another very important phenomena called ocean acidification so that's one of the major critical reason for coral bleaching when i put the word acidification means the reaction comprising carbon dioxide reacting with the water molecule forming carbonic acid the weakest acid which ionizes into hydrogen and bicarbonate ions the rise in the level of hydrogen ion leading to acidity because the ph will be below 7 so that's what we commonly called ocean acidification so that slowly corroded the coral islands so that's the third major reason 
and fourth is the unsustainable increase in the tourism because the tourism rate are the people every year increasing indirectly there will be deposit a discharge of sea beach are the waste into the ocean or in the nearby stream etc that's another reason unsustainable tourism then fifth is the unscientific coral uh, unscientific coastal developments because as you know that many of the coastal cities town results in pollutant like nutrient rich component into the water bodies that can lead to algal bloom or what we commonly called eutrophication so the point here is that unscientific developmental activity along the coastal region is another reason again because of the tourism the human habitation in the coastal area is increasing so that also lead to discharge of waste into the sea the last point pollution so the litter deposition waste plastic or oil or anything across because whatever you are dumping in the open yard are slowly leaching into the water bodies okay including your plastic you are throwing you know that every day we are dumping more than lakhs of pet bottles so that's why we might read in the paper that pacific garbage island there's a word given pacific garbage island so that means 50% of pacific area are dumbed of plastic waste so pollution another major reason but these are the component can directly or indirectly leads to coral bleaching what are the control measures you can recommend one is as usual we are saying reduce the global warming because every country has to meet the paris agreement preferably 1.5 degree to a maximum level of 2 degree centigrade the country has to determine their contribution so that the global warming can be reduced second is strict regulation of coastal zones that means coastal regulation zone should be strictly maintained and monitored including the tourism discharge of nutrient are waste into the sea coast parallelly overfishing also should be regulated so all these are put the word regulation of coastal zone then enabling policy for coral reef management so you can create some new technology like what i said in the last class bio rock so where you are creating a synthetic steel rock by providing electricity the calcium ion joining with the carbonate and here around the steel there the coral larvae multiply make the natural coral four to five times faster than natural coral island formation but that's that's a way in which technology can be used for managing or improving the coral islands third important point and fourth is you can have international collaboration because ramsar convention cbd sites wild fauna and flora etc and all these bodies are directly or indirectly involved in conservation of environment so international collaboration to gain knowledge gain technology so that the islands can be properly managed so by protecting the coastal line from the wave action and tropical storm by sustainable utility of resources definitely the coral islands can be protected or conserved for that science what is coral bleaching 
what are the reason and what are the maintenance you can carry out so question number one and second is again the reason outbreak Pallavu is recently applied, uh, appeared in the news value what it reflects so Palavu is a large volcanic island and small coral reef see the point is a large volcanic island with a small coral reef the country has taken a bold step in the junction of climate change so Paris climate agreement after the Fiji meeting they banned or abandoned the utility using of sun cream because indirectly it harmed the coral islands so the island took a strong decision of banning the usage of sun cream another example is oxybenzone oxybenzone is an example for a sun cream and they estimated that they are using annually 6 to 14,000 ton per year and when we when I say, said the word sun cream they are capable of absorbing UV radiation so once you are releasing the sun cream into the ocean water it is attaching on the coral reef absorbing the UV thereby leading to bleaching so they want to protect the islands and they want to protect the nature from climate change or global warming so they made a bold step of banning the usage of sun cream across the island that's why Palamu came into news value so even though they passed the order in 2018 it came into force this year January 1 2020 again another very interesting point is that the rock island in Palavu is a world heritage site recognized by UNESCO so that's why again the word is very important Palavu is very important the rock islands in Palavu denoting the world heritage sites so when I put the word sun cream I place only one example oxybenzone other than that there are more than 10 ingredients for example ethyl paraben octinocytes butyl paraben octocrylene methyl benzylene camphor triclosan benzyl paraben methyl paraben phenoxyethanol then other such island took the decision are Hawaii in US and they are going to implement the rule from 2021 similarly the US Virgin Island Dutch Caribbean Islands also in the verge of banning the usage of sun cream so I can put the point is a global movement to protect the coral island from bleaching that's why Palavu came into news value okay that's the answer then again there's another very very important this year January KFD Keisner forest disease Karnataka recently outbreak monkey fever or Keisner forest disease again if you go through Kerala Kasabod Kanur area visualize the same even Malpuram so that's why you're connecting Karnataka and some part of Kerala have got the issue with monkey fever and it was came popularly called with the term Kaisner forest disease authorities are taking measures including vaccination to combat the disease and spread in the states you will see what the disease is when I put the word Kaisner forest disease virus the virus is the causative organism he is identified in 1957 from a sick monkey in the Kaisner forest that's why the name is 
Kaisner Forest disease. A viral component was identified from a sick monkey in 1957 in the Kaisner Forest. So they earned the name Kaisner Forest disease. Since from there, nearly 400 to 500 human beings per year affected by this monkey's fever. Then again, there's no report regarding transfer of the disease from human to human being. No record we have. But probably through ticks, T-I-C-K. Because the ticks may be carrier of the disease. Similarly, rodent, shrew, monkeys are the common host. So, episodic with high fatality in the primates rather than any other category. Okay, so again, it was said by the people that contacting with the rat or rodent or the infected monkey or tick may be the possible reason for spreading of the disease to human being. So again, I said that in human it was spreading through tick bites. The tick may be the carrier of the disease from the primates like monkey or anything across. Now there are proofs saying that the disease is transmitted by uh, monkeys. So because monkey is also acting as a carrier. There's another possibility. There's no evidence of disease transmission via unpasteurized milk of any of this animal. Because you might read in the paper that people are not drinking milk. So unpasteurized milk, there's no record stating that transmission occurs through unpasteurized milk. So the, probably it is from the infected animals like monkey, rat or through tick. Symptoms. The incubation period is 3 to 8 days. The symptoms are almost typical of viral diseases. Chill, mild body temperature or fever, headache. Subsequently, severe muscular pain with vomiting, gastrointestinal syndromes, bleeding. That will continue. Again, some people generally they recover but after few weeks they again they get the disease because the illness is considered as biphasic in the second infection stage they show the sign of neurological manifestations tremors vision deficit etc but these are the symptoms associated with Kaisner monkey's disease. Vulnerable group. The vulnerable group is those people are going for trucking or recreation or people working in the forest area or the outdoor forest or near the rural area of the forest are prone to the disorder. Okay. Abnormally hunters, forest workers are the farmers settled near the forest area they may contact with the ticks which are the carriers secondly dry season the disease outbroken was comparatively higher again the disease can be identified only through polymer chain reaction what we commonly call PCR like your coronavirus detection and similarly here we are using another technology ELISA defined as enzyme linked immunosorbent serological assay both can be used for diagnosing molecularly the virus again no specific treatment for the patients only only thing is providing rest with high quantity of hydration water then precaution from bleeding. So far a vaccine was not proved by the people. Probably you can use insect repellents 
are wearing protective clothing because the ticks are endemic to the area. So by using insect repellent or wearing protective clothing, you can avoid the disorder. There is Kaisner disease. So Honda virus, Kaisner virus. Okay, possible for hitting the question. And third is again a very common word in the news value Earth Biogenome Project, an ambitious project of reading the DNA of the world known animals, plants, and fungal species within a span of 10 years, sequencing 1.5 meter different genome with a budget estimated as. 4.7 billion pound called with the term Earth Biogenome Projects. So the compound is very simple. We are going to sequence the entire genome of living organism in the earth, which may be an animal or a plant or a fungal species, but not the lower forms. Okay, so creating a genomic bank of animal, plant, and fungal species. The record, the genome, the blueprint of the life of 1.5 million species we are going to target. Okay, 1.5 million people we are going to target which belong to the category animal, plant or fungal species. So 19 research organizations across the world jointly collaborating with the program. The full DNA sequence of all the world eukaryotic species is a target because when I put the word DNA, it representing the hereditary or genetic material of the organism occurring inside the cell membrane. But those organisms containing DNA will be isolating the DNA and they are going for sequencing. Okay. And once we completing the project, definitely this is going to make miracle in science. Because any disorder in the genome can be detected by using sequence of DNA in the genome of the particular organism. But that's the program called Earth Biogenome Project. A huge project launched collaboratively by 19 research organizations around the world in sequencing the living organism belonging to animal, plant, fungal species. Called with the term Earth Biogenome Project, a breakthrough in science. So similarly, this another word was a very common human microbiome project or research. See the word? The word is again differing from the previous one. Here it is microbiome research. The, there's a clue in the wording. Microbiome means microbial organisms. Pune hosted an international conference on microbiome research this year. This year, in 2020. And actually the program was in the infant stage. Because we are targeting the research on microbial organism in human body. Because human body is an abode of different communities of microbe, branded by the term human microbe. So we are going to study the human microbe because the microbiome of the human body have got multiple roles. For example, the host physiology, the digestive process of the host your carbohydrates and your production of vitamins, your immune system, defense against the pathogen, all these are directly or indirectly facilitated by these microorganisms. Okay, so we are going to concentrate the entire microbiota of the human body so that, so that the output may be very unique in the sense that 
we can regulate the human physiology, we can regulate the human immunity, we can improve the human defense, etc. But that's the outbreak of the event. The research on the human biome throw light on how different part of the human body are occupied by characteristic microbial communities because the microbe occurring in the stomach is not occurring in other part of the body and how various factors contributing shaping the composition of microbe including their genetics dietary requirements age the geographic location ethnicity and this implication or this knowledge gained can be used for diagnosing wide range of diseases and their resistance we commonly brand the uh, program by the term microbiome research and the breakthrough in science again there is another word is again in the news value in India transgenic rice you know the word transgenic whenever we put the word transgenic transferring DNA from one species to another different species the transferring DNA are gene from one species to another different species the issue here is that in some part of India they notice that the seeds of rice containing high dosage of a heavy metal namely arsenic arsenic contamination so that's a big issue so as you know that arsenic contamination was first recorded from the water resources in West Bengal and the disorder is known by the term skin cancer a very popularly black skin disease black skin disease that's from water resources but now we notice the arsenic from rice so that's the issue because rice forming the staple food of Indians so a Lucknow based CSIR National Botanical Research Institute identified a new novel gene from a fungal species and this novel gene producing an enzyme called arsenic methyl transferase this can degrade arsenic see the point so a gene was identified from a fungal partner and we identified the gene which is going to produce an enzyme that will reduce the arsenic contamination so we identify the gene isolate the gene from the fungal partner transferred into the rice plant through a vector that's a soil bacterium namely agrobacterium tumefaciens and we produced a novel transgenic rice which is containing relatively less amount of arsenic content so that's a breakthrough a new rice variety capable of growing in arsenic contaminated soil so we can recover the plant from the toxicity caused by arsenic to human being so transgenic rice another breakthrough in science again another one 100 k genome asia project and the breakthrough in science Indian scientists and companies are involved with a 100 k genome asia project led out of the Nyam Technological University of Singapore in sequencing the whole genome of 100 k Asians including 50,000 Indians remaining 50,000 from other part of Asia so previous one was we are going to sequence entire biota in the earth like plant animal and fungal partners fungal species here Indian scientists with multi corporate companies led by the Nyam Technological University of Singapore going to sequence human being 50,000 from Indians 50,000 from other part of Asia so a non-profit consortium has announced an ambitious sequence of one lakh Asian individual 
in hope of accelerating precise medical application for Asian population. Because once you know the sequence of the human being, if you are comparing that one, we can identify the defective or the gene has to be edited. Thus we can go for treatments in a specific manner. Okay, but that's the component. And again, I said that 50,000 from India, remaining from 12 South Asian countries, at least 7 North and East 7 Asian countries may be selected. And this genome will be paired with microbiome, clinical, phenotypic information to allow deeper analysis of diseased and healthy individual in the, con in the context of inferred local ancestries. All is a, once you know the genome of an organism, definitely you can prepare or you can have technology to cure disease or you can recover from disease outbreak. So that was the program launched by India with collaboration with Singapore called with the term 100K Genome Asia Project and the milestone. So one side we have got global micro um, global genome projects, second is human microbiome projects, and third is genome Asia projects. Again, another very very unique term, stratospheric aerosol injection. So when I put the word stratospheric aerosol injection, the idea behind the event is that spraying some sulfurous compound in the stratosphere so that that global temperature can be reduced that's the concept by spraying aerosolic spray of sulfurous compound can dim sunlight reaching the earth thereby to a level we can minimize global warming so that's the concept of stratospheric aerosol injection. It is a geoengineering technique. The word is stratospheric aerosol injection to limit global warming thereby indirectly we can regulate the climate change. Okay, but that was what we are going to carry. A mixture of sulfuric acid in water created naturally from photochemical decomposition and the source containing gases like carbonyl sulfide naturally you are getting the compound or you can create the compound by mixture of sulfuric acid in water so once you are spraying the compound in the atmosphere this indirectly reduce the global temperature that's the only benefit you have but indirectly many harm because this may harm the ozone depletion whitening of the sky the tropopause warming and the humidification of the stratosphere health impact on the human being the stratospheric temperature rise heat wave may be circulated these are the negative impact of such a stratospheric aerosol injection in the atmosphere okay but that's again uh, another very important component then another one is oxytocin, again uh, popularized in the news value. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare recently restricted the manufacture of oxytocin formulation for domestic usage to public sector only. So they made a restriction, the usage of compound in the domestic sector, very very important. Why it was so, we'll see. They banned the impact of the compound and its formulation. See the point? The Minister of Health and Family Welfare restricted the manufacture of the compound for domestic usage in the public sector. Similarly, they banned the import of the compound and its formulation. Okay, that was the news value. As you know that, this compound was produced by only one organization in India, Karnataka Antibiotic Pharmaceutical Limited, a public sector company 
for the drug for the domestic usage the drug is not available in the open market this will be given to the hospital or clinic directly why we ban the compound because people start injecting the compound to cattle or livestock to increase their milk generation or generation of milk similarly the farmers inject the compound to the vegetables to increase their size of the cucurbit vegetables like pumpkin watermelon eggplant ivory gourd cucumber etc so that's a uh, unscientific usage so application livestock to improve milk production applied in vegetables to improve their size that's why the compound was banned so normally the compound was known as hug hormone it was produced by the control of brain by the pituitary glands so naturally occurring hormone in female that improve the child birth by expanding the uterus similarly they increase the breast feeding so milk synthesis will be increased that's why there was applied in the livestock for improving the milk production because of the expansion of the uterus farmers applied the compound in the vegetable for improving the size of the fruits okay so that's why the issue came across so now government of india banned the usage at the local or domestic level except for clinical purposes again world health organization given an alternative known by the term carbitocin carbitocin with the least side effects so that may replace the drug oxytocin which is controversial recently so the other compound is carbitocin the former is oxytocin okay so that may be a possible question again why u w a y u the expansion is wind argumentation purifying units so there was a program recently launched in new delhi one of the highly polluted air polluted area among the indian cities the instrument was designed jointly by csia council for scientific and industrial research in collaborating with niri national environmental engineering research institutes the funding was given by dst department of science and technology so csir niri using the fund from the dst designed an instrument called vayu so this can effectively purify the air within a 500 square meter but well, that's very unique so once you got an instrument that will precipitate the pollutant in the air so again the usage of electricity is half a unit for 10 hours so minimum electricity consumption maximum you are getting the precipitation of air pollutant so there was trial in the metropolitan city new delhi okay two principles mainly wind generation for dilution of air pollutant native pollutant removal so this is the principle of the instrument one is wind generation for dilution of air pollutant secondly active removal of pollutant it has filters for particulate matter removal the activator carbon and the uv lamp for poisonous gases remove volatile organic compound or hydrocarbon and also remove carbon monoxide the device has one fan and filter for sucking and removing particulate matter the uv lamp and half kg activated carbon charcoal coated with the chemical titanium oxide you effectively remove the hydrocarbon including what carbon monoxide so this was trialed and successful in the metropolitan city delhi so what we commonly call it vayu again this is another very very interesting question so again a big news in the paper one sun one world one grid plan so that's a good question one sun one world one grid plan what it implies see 
how we can elaborate the answer india energy demand is projected to be 4.2 percentage in the coming years so we are requiring to grow by 4.2 percentage an expansion faster than all major economies of the world so that's again very interesting comparing the developed country we are requiring more energy annually india relies about 250 billion fossil fuel per annum in the form of oil diesel lng cooking or thermal coal that's why india made the scheme called one sun one world one grid abbreviated as oso wog plan okay so we are moving from the traditional fossil fuel to sun fuel eco friendly and more uh, uh, less effective less cost effective so what is the mission of the program the vision behind the program is sun never sets and is a constant at the sun geographical location globally at any given point of time so that is the concept of the vision of the program sun never sets in some part of the geographical area so we are tapping sun energy it has been taken up under the technical assistance program of the world bank so world bank is going to fund for the program the plan is also get leverage from the international solar alliance co-funded by india and france india and france jointly have got the program called international solar alliance nearly 121 countries are members of the program so world bank isa the sun never sets through which we are going to implement the scheme called one sun one world one grid plan so with india in the middle the solar spectrum can be easily divided in two broad zones far east which is comprising the countries like myanmar vietnam thailand lava cambodia far west covering middle east countries and african region so these are the two area sun never sets the plan is supposed to be complete in three phases phase 1 establishment of middle east south asia and southeast asia interconnection that was we are targeting for the first phase phase 2 the it deals with the mesa ce grid getting interconnected with african power pools so that's another very important point so when i put the word misa sea the comprising middle east south asia southeast asia interconnections okay so it deals with the interconnection of that first phase getting interconnected with african power pools third phase global interconnection so initially at the regional level from regional to the african power pool from there to the global scale so this is the plan we have got in the scheme called one sun one world one grid program significance this tremendously mitigate the climate change or reduce the climate change because we are targeting for the paris accord or summit definitely the solar energy will minimize the global warming by reducing the release of global warming gases are the greenhouse gases further it enhances the countries to fulfill the nationally determined contribution to reduce the global warming so global mitigation significance secondly it increase the integration and efficiency because cost effectively less expensive comparing fossil fuels and third is as india is currently importing around 250 billion fossil fuel annually already we said that 250 billion we are importing so this will meet the requirement in a cheaper rate okay but that's again very very attractive so the participating countries in attracting investment in renewable energy sources as well as utilizing skill technology and the funding recently the economic benefit from this body would positively impact poverty and elevation 
supporting to mitigate water, sanitation, food and other socio-economic challenges faced by the countries. But that's an, that's an another credit for the program called the One Sun, One World, One Grid program. It allows national renewable energy management centers in India, also at the regional and the global level. This move during the time of COVID-19 pandemic gives India opportunity to tackle or lead evolving global strategies. So India is going to lead this program globally. And what are the challenges? One is installation of microgrid is not that much easy because it requiring large initial investment. The capital expenditure is huge. So that's one other issue we are going to face. Secondly, vulnerability of the grids. Often, naturally, they are vulnerable to accident like weather, cyber attack, etc. Then again, there may be loss in the transportation of energy. So that means less than 20% efficiency. And fourth is, India is depending on Chinese import for the solar equipments like cell panel, etc. There's another issue. Now we are we are talking with China. So whether we got the raw material from China or not is an issue. And the last point is problem with incorrectness. The project success hinges on the trust, not just transmission line between grid participants. Sometimes we fail difficult to achieve between two neighboring countries. So that's again an issue. So if there's not a proper understanding between the country, that can create issues. And these are the challenges in implementing the scheme. Anyway, India is going ahead with the program. India is now going, moving with the program, irrespective of the girdle we are going to face. Then again, swamps of locusts. You might see in a photograph in the Hindu paper or in the visuals, TV. Locusts are blooming into Indian part of the world. So that can eradicate the green cover of the earth. So there may be a question. When I put the word locusts, a desert locust is short horned grasshopper. In the flying stage, it is very safe, not harmful. They become dangerous only when their population is high. Close contact in the crowded condition trigger the behavioral changes. It is more dangerous in the gregarious phase because they enter this by grouping themselves into bands and forming swamps, travel 150 km per day, eating whatever green in the yard. It is not controllable at the right time. These insect swamp can threaten the food security of the country. The countries in Africa like Ethiopia, Somalia, for the last 25 years, suffering from locust attack. So that's a small introduction regarding locust. So in the solitary phase, it's not dangerous. But when they move in bulk, it is a dangerous weapon to eradicate the green cover of the earth, thereby the food security. Africa always troubled by this issue. So in India, we cited the saying in April 2020 in the Indo-Pakistan border. And their arrival is unusual than the previous years. The Agriculture Ministry have a body called Locust Warning Organization. Reported the insect from Rajasthan districts. In India, cited normally during July to October, along the Pakistan border. In 2019, parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat reported the swamp caused damage to their rabi crop. These were first swamp reported ever in India in the year 1997. So that's the first time we recorded the organism in India. So in 2019 we recorded, in 2020 we are again recording. So we recorded in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. Then 
one of the factors favoring the movement of the insect is high speed wind. Again, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization said that locusts have started moving in search of food. A warning was given to all the countries. In the early April 2020, the spring bread swarms from Pakistan started arriving in Rajasthan. As diseases before the monsoon rain, they found dry condition. They continued to move east in Rajasthan, looking for green vegetation, for food and shelter, where they will mature, lay egg with the onset of monsoon, leading to damage. So that was India is going to face currently. Why they led to the early arrival? The cyclonic storm of Mekunu, Luban, that had struck Oman and Yemen in 2018. This turned the large desert into track into land lake because, because the storm rainy season are there. It became lake-like, facilitating locust breeding that continued through 2019. Swamata crop in East Africa reached the peak in November 2019. They built up in southern Iran and Pakistan since the beginning of 2020. With the heavy rain in East Africa, March, April, enabling further breeding. So the unusual climate change favored the multiplication and breeding of this locust. What can it mean to crop in India? At present, chance of crop damage is low because already the farmers harvest their rabbi crop. But the problem here is that once they present they breed. At a time they lay 80 to 90 eggs, egg. All of them are mature, high maturity rates. Within three months they complete their life cycle. So that means it's going to produce 40 to 80 million locusts per square kilometer. Okay. Then they start laying egg after the monsoon. Continue to breeding for another two more months. The newer generation may rise during the growth of Kharif cropping. That's why in 2020, Minister of Agriculture chaired the meeting for the stock situation. Now we are going to control the animal uh, insects by melathion insecticide spray. Melathion. Even though the chemical was banned, we are going to use the compound for killing the locust. Okay. India has also put an order of 60 specialized locust sprayers with the UK. With India already having 50 such machines for melathion spraying to control the locust attack to Indian crops. So that's the locust. Then there are another two words. One is Gandhi Solar Park. Again this year. Prime Minister of India along with the UN chief and the world leaders first time inaugurated Gandhi Solar Park and Gandhi Peace Garden at the UN headquarters in New York, a milestone in the Indian history. Okay, the guest highlighted India's attempt to not only talk about the climate change but also bring the action. So that's another one. We also get the reward of mitigating climate change by effectively reducing the global temperature. The 50 kilowatt Gandhi Solar Park is a 1 million pound solar park that will produce 50 kilowatt of electricity from the roof of the conference building at the UN headquarters. The energy generator is equivalent to usage of 30,000 kilo of coal consumption. Similarly, equivalent to planting 1,000 seedling over a period of 10 years. So, both in terms of consuming coal, planting trees, the program was very unique. Okay, 193 solar panel was launched. That means one for every UN member state. 193 member states are there. We, we, we made 193 solar panels. Okay, producing 50 kilowatt, a breakthrough carried by India in New York. 
Then there's another one is Gandhi Peace Garden. Parallelly, India inaugurated the Gandhi Peace Garden in the State University of New York at the old Westbury at Long Island, where we planted 153 trees in the garden to honor the father of India, Mahatma Gandhi ji, on the 150th anniversary. The Peace Garden is crowd project. which will help people or give people a chance to adapt trees in memory of their loved ones the same day we released the un postage stamp stamp of mahatma gandhi as a mark of 150th anniversary on same day the prime minister was conferred conferred with global goalkeeper award for the swachh bharat abhiyan clean india mission the award was given by bill gates the founder of microsoft so that's a rare credit given to the indian prime minister as the program was called with the time swachh bharat abhiyan successfully we implemented thereby made clean india it's a joint program between Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and CMERI Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute located in Durakpur West Bengal is a constituent laboratory of CSIR recently launched the world largest solar tree jointly in West Bengal the capacity is about 11.5 kwp the annual capacity to generate 12 to 14000 units of clean green power single sol- single solar tree comprises 35 solar pv panels each having capacity of 330 wp each it has been designed in such a way that it ensures maximum exposure of each solar pv panel to sunlight the inclination of the arm holding the solar pv panel are flexible and can be adjusted as per the requirements this feature is not available in roof mounted solar facilities so each solar tree cost about 7.5 lakh and the interested minister of micro small medium enterprises can align their business model with the pradhan mantri kisan urja suraksha evam udan mahabaya pm kusuma scheme for the farmers for developing a renewable based energy grid the data of energy generated by the tree can be monitored either real time or on daily basis as the tree seeks to ensure minimum shadowed area it will make it available for usage in agriculture activities like e tractor e power tilters and high capacity pump so that's a breakthrough in indian science the creation of the world largest solar tree at west bengal so that's again a possibility of component then there's another word oxy2 the health startup mission of iit madras in collaboration with Helison has developed this device. The device can easily take vitals of an individual such as heart rate, temperature, oxygen saturation, respiration rate clinically and accurately. Commercially available now and has been already de- deployed to monitor 2000 patients. a day in hospital the core technology of oxy2 
was validated after doing a year long multi centric study at various chennai based medical institutes for accuracy and performance with reference to current standard the device to be of great help during the pandemic when the medical staff have to come in close with the patients to take their vitals but that's an advantage of oxy2 machine when we go for about the device is powered by a coin cell battery and is designed in such a way that it can be recycled and reused it can be clipped to the patient's finger and data is sent to a mobile phone through radio waves the captured data can be seen through a mobile app and can be shared with the hospitals and doctors if required the device accurately measure at the armpit blood oxygen level and other parameters at the finger itself the life span of the machine is 1 year other than being in use during the pandemic the device can also used by the hospitals and doctors for patient management the cost of the device varies from rupees 2500 to 10000 depending on the spec of the machine and function it can perform so that's what we commonly call oxy2 a breakthrough in the science and technology again the union minister of human resource and development launched a new covid-19 kit known as corosor the kit was designed by iit delhi as the world most affordable rt pcr based covid-19 diagnostic kits the base price of the kit was rupees 399 only around 10 companies are given license for producing the kits the technology of preparing the kit is be is to be transferred to the companies by the iit delhi when we go for about the kit icmr with the kit in place the testing capacity of indian is go up to 20 lakh per day from the current scenario of 3 lakh per day the testing cost of the method is greatly reduced as a kit use a probe free method to conduct the analysis or test with the current method is using probe based one the kit will also help india achieve its atma nirbhar bharat abhiyan as a kit is to be developed indigenously both icmr and drug control journal of india has approved the test kits icmr approved the kit with the high scoring rates meanwhile the drug control journal of india approved the kit with high sensitivity and accurate or specificity that's the about the kit another word should IIT Kanpur has developed an ultraviolet sanitizing product ultraviolet san- sanitizing product should the device is capable of disinfection in 10 into 10 square feet room just within 15 minutes it is a smartphone operated handy device comprising six uv lamp each lamp is of 15 watt the device can be used to to assist at highly prone places such as hotels hospitals mall offices schools colleges as it is the future of a smartphone attached to it the device can be operated using remote as well 
UV sanitizer, sanitization usually UVC is to kill microbes including drug resistant bacteria. It's dangerous to human being especially to the skin and eye. UVA and UVB other form of UV can cause sunburn and premature aging. UVC does not reach the earth's surface as the atmosphere absorbs it. Therefore, UVC used in sanitizer is man-made. The fourth one is social media uses in India has increased significantly since the implementation of 4G technology. So it is very popular across the globe, social media, after the 4G technology. So the need for a homegrown made in India, social media application was felt by many in the country, largely due to rising concern related to the privacy of data and data ownership. So every Indian want a homegrown made Indian social media application. With more than 500 million social media users across the country and the number are even increasing. Under the inspiration of the spiritual leader Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, the founder of the art of living, more than 1000 IT professionals came together to develop first made in India social media super application named as Elements that was launched in the July 2020 by the Honorable Vice President of India. So the question is what is Elements? Okay, so Indian made social media with a super application. We will see what the elements comprising. As per the media report, the application has already been downloaded around 2 lakh times and crowd tested for several months. It was designed by Sumuru Software Solution Private Limited. And they claimed that they never shared the user data with the third parties. And the data of users of the elements application will be stored in India. Designed by combining the best and popular features of commonly used social media applications. The application will be available in 8 Indian languages. In the upcoming period or the month, the characters like audio video conference calls, public profiles for users to follow, subscribe, a secure elements pay, payment system, etc. will be also added. So that's what we commonly call elements, a new social media of Indian origin. Again, Accelerate Bijan, the Department of Science and Technology, Science and Engineering Research Board, recently landed a scheme known as Accelerate Vijayan, the July 2020. The objective of the program is providing a single platform that induces or stimulates or encourages high-end scientific research across the country by providing a common forum for conducting workshop internship, capacity building program for research scholars and students across the country. The web portal of the Accelerate Vision Scheme was launched in 2020 July. The mission Samogan means bring together. The Accelerate Vision Scheme begins with this mission. This mission is for consolidating all scientific interaction in the country under one common roof. There are two components, Sangosti, which including seminar and symposia, 
Sayonjia, which include Chronicle, both together come under the mission called Samogan, which means bring together. The second one is Mission Abayas, which refer the skill developments for the winter season under the Accelerate Vijayan Scheme. Application have been launched for the Mission Abayas. It is for the students looking for career development in the research field. Abayas comprises two components. For both the component, application for the winter season December 2022, January 2020 has started. The components are high end workshop, Karshala, and Vrutika, the research internship. These are the two components included under the Abayas Karshala and Vrutika. So, one is high-end workshop, other is research internship. For the next five years, the target will be to organize 1,000 high-end workshops. This workshop will give opportunity approximately 25,000 postgraduates and doctoral scholars across the country. So, that's what we commonly call it. Uh, the new program launched by Department of Science and Technology. There is another one. For the treatment of COVID-19 positive case, June 2020, Hyderabad-based pharmaceutical company, Hetero Drug, has received approval of from the Drug Control General of India, a department under Central Drug Standard Control Organization for manufacturing and marketing of antiviral drug Ramsphere. So the question is what do you mean by the word Ramsphere? An antiviral drug produced and marketed by Hetero Drug, a Hyderabad based pharmaceutical company. And the brand name COV4, heteropharmaceutical generic version of Ramsphere will be marketed in India. The drug is manufactured at the hetero company Hyderabad facility while its active pharmaceutical ingredients is being developed by Andhra Pradesh Vishagapatna. Ramsphere, the antiviral drug is administrated by a injection into a vein. The medication was developed by United States biopharmaceutical company Gilead Science for treatment of hepatitis C. UK, Singapore, Japan are the countries where the drug has been approved to date for the treatment of COVID-19 case. So, but that's the Ramsphere. So, that's again marketed by the Hyderabad-based Hyderabad -based company. The price and availability. Since it's an injectable drug, it requires the administration under the supervision of a health care practitioner. So, it won't be available in the retail chain. Drug is made available only in the hospitals and government health care agencies. It is available in 100 milligram injectable dose. The price range goes to 5000 to 6000 per dose. Hetero has targeted to produce 1 lakh doses. In the upcoming weeks, the company has started. The production can be increased based on the demand. COV-4 will be used for the treatment of confirmed COVID-19 cases for those who have severe symptom of the disease. That's the Ramsphere is marketed by Hetero, Hyderabad based company. Again, June 2020, 
the union minister of health and family welfare launched i lab see the word so the question is what is i lab i lab means infectious disease diagnostic laboratory so it was launched in new delhi the first ever i lab in india helping scaling up the testing for covid 19 across the country so it helping scaling up the testing for covid 19 across india it will be developed by the dbt department of biotechnology in one of the covid testing hub at present there are more than 20 such hub in the country operating on a daily basis this hub have 100 testing laboratories that have conducted about 260000 test till this day the objective of i lab is a mobile testing facility that will be used for collecting sample and testing for covid-19 across in accessible area especially in the rural or village region of the country so that's what we commonly call i lab a land of government of india there's another one the railway protection force rpf recently launched a robot known as captain arjun the purpose here is to intensify the screening and survival at the railway station operating under the central railways a pilot scheme launched by central railway known as captain arjun the robot will screen the passengers while they board the train it will also help a watch on anti social elements this can be employed for multiple usages and is an effective element that operate under the station across the control captain arjun will also increase the security plan of the railway stations the robot is equipped with pt is a camera motion sensor one dome camera the camera installed in the robot use artificial intelligent algorithm to track anti social activities and suspicious activities also the robot has an inbuilt motion activated spotlights siren and internal storage to record data during network failures the robot does thermal screening and also record the temperature of the passengers it also display record a temperature on a digital display so that's a big breakthrough by india captain arjun again the defense institute of advanced technology diat pune has developed a nanotechnology based disinfectant spray so last class we dealt the nanotechnology so it is an outbreak of nanotechnology based disinfectant spray to fight against the covid 19 the spray has named as anania the spray can be used by common man healthcare workers personal protective equipment elevator buttons contaminated surfaces such as medical instruments door knob room and corridor it is only not only for stop covid 19 from entering the body but also to eradicate the virus that come in contact directly with the human being anania is a water based spray effective for 24 hours it attaches to fabric metallic objects plastic the toxicity of the spray is negligible to human being shelf life of the spray is more than 6 months 
So that's a again a breakthrough by Defense Institute of Advanced Technology, DIAT. When I put word DIAT, it's operated under the Ministry of Defense. The institute trained officers of Indian Ordnance Factories, Coast Guard, Indian Armed Force, both Air Force, Army and Navy, established 1951. The Defense Minister is the Chancellor of the Institute. So this is an outbreak of Dayat known as Ananaya, a nanotechnology based anti-infectant and disinfectant spray. So that's again a possible question. Again, the scientists and researchers at the Center for Nano and Software Matter Science operating under Department of Science and Technology invented a low cost effective hydrogen fuel from water using molybdenum dioxide that is acting as an enzyme. So we are going to generate hydrogen fuel from water using molybdenum dioxide. Molybdenum dioxide can function as an efficient catalyst to reduce energy used for splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. The, pro the program is electrolysis. When we speak about the molybdenum dioxide, it is a potential compound replacing the current using compound platinum. As you know that platinum is expensive and have got limited source of platinum from the earth. So the scientists are replacing platinum by molybdenum dioxide. Significance is split water and import hydrogen. Hydrogen, a popular clean fuel, predominantly used to make fuel cells. Okay, the chemical energy, hydrogen converted into electricity. The Minister of Renewable Energy is supporting research and development on hydrogen energy and fuel greatly. The project of hydrogen transportation is conducted by Mahendra and Mahendra, Banaras Hindu University, IIT Delhi currently. So another breakthrough, generating hydrogen fuel from splitting of water using a cheaper chemical or a catalyst, molybdenum dioxide. A breakthrough of Department of Science and Technology and in breakthrough of nano technology clean energy fuel so again there's another one very important in kerala scenario agapi chitra magna agapi chitra magna sri chitra Tirunal institute for medical science and technology functioning under dst developed a magnetic nanoparticle for extracting RNA called with the term Agapi Chitra Magna. It was validated by National Institute of Virology, developed by the SET IMCT and transferred to Agapa Diagnostics, hence the name Agapa Chitra Magna Kit. It was approved by Central Drug Standard Control Organization. When we say about the kits, it also in out outbreak of nanotechnology, magnetic nanoparticle to isolate the RNA. The nanoparticles are used to capture RNA from the sample of the patient. The kit enhances detection of positive case. This is because of the magnetic nanoparticle binds strongly with viral DNA. When exposed to the magnetic field, gives concentrated RNA benefits affordable kits only 350 and again the the rate is going to come down 150 it helped to address the need of India government of India estimated that the country will need around 80 lakh kit per month for the next six months agapa diagnosis 
has manufacturing capacity 3 lakh kits per month so we are going to meet the need of the society in a more effective manner magnetic nanotech using rna extraction kits a breakthrough from kerala agapi chitra magna ukoda sapya